Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amanda Ray, and whenever I was 17, almost 18 years old, I left the cult that I was born in. If you're interested in seeing the story on that, I'll leave the link in my description box down below. But today I'm gonna to be talking to Leah. This is the first interview that is not one of my cousins. She's not a member of the order. You guys may have seen her on an episode of Escaping Polygamy, but she did come from a different polygamous group known as the AUB. Which, this is my first question, I guess. What does AUB stand for? So AUB actually stands for Apostolic United Brethren. Um, I don't think they actually had any real purpose behind the name. I've heard mixed comments on that. I think they just wanted a name for like legal purposes. They call it the group. That's just kind of what it's referred to. A lot of the time they'd refer to themselves as groupies. And I really wanted to point out what that actually meant. In the order, I did know a few members of your group, and they okay. they said something about United Order. I just yeah, like, United oh. Order is like the principle that we're living is okay. United Order, but they don't refer to the actual group as the order. Okay, I guess that was my personal question. I may cut that <laughs> up, but I think some people would be interested in that. Too. Did you guys have so in the order? I've talked about this on my channel. We had numbered men, or like mm -hmm. the men that are going to be numbered to be going into heaven. Did you guys have some form of that? Um, so I, they had talked about like how many people will get into heaven but we didn't really have like a specific um reference to them like the numbered men obviously we had like the uh prophet and the council members and the quorum of the 70s like similar to the lds church right so the council is kind of like who you have to tie into the prophet is the leader and then the council are like his like inner circle, I guess. They're like the thing. head honchos. <laughs> Beneath them is the Quorum of the Seventies, which is kind of like how Jesus had his 12 apostles, mm -hmm. but um, that basically like spread his word and were responsible for different things um, on, like on behalf of Jesus kind of thing. Like somebody so might handle the money or the food or whatever. Um, and in this case, like uh, they would go out and like, spread the word so a they little were like bit missionary? almost but with more authority okay that's one thing that i thought was so weird about <laughs> your church that they had missionaries i don't think i've met any other cult members from other cults that had missionaries yeah i i've, I've heard of some but not in the same way yeah. um like i've heard of like recruitments um to different cults but not like, oh yeah, let's spread the word. Did, like, it was a door to door. No, no. Um, they were kind of smart about it. They would kind of like instill themselves in different um, locations and churches and kind of see if anyone had been looking further into the religion, seeing what else um, there is. So LDS. Pre especially okay. LDS church because their like previous beliefs were plaguing me. So yeah. anyone that was like, wait a minute, like didn't they used to practice polygamy? Why did they stop doing that? All of a sudden, they're like, hey, like, did you know there's a true church that still practices polygamy? Wow. Let me teach you about it. Like, But in order to be a part of it, you have to come to this place and, mm -hmm. and give up all your belongings. And that's how they get you. Is they're like, you wow. can't fully be a part of it unless you come to Zion. Okay, <laughs> I have so many questions on that, but I want to hurry and talk about this one right before we get into that. Um, so... You were not born into the group. No, I wasn't. So I kind of want to know how the missionary process happened to your family. So I was kind of blindsided with it because um, I was so young and I didn't really understand what was going on. My parents were LDS. Um, okay. And I remember um, we lived in like this big high rise apartment building and there was kind of like a rec room between like the general area and we used to rent it out and it just seemed like we were like going and hanging out with other families and meeting up with them but like doing church stuff so like oh, taking okay. sacrament and, and like talking about god and whatnot and it's weird to me you were lds <laughs> but you were in america right no what what part of the so world? we were in the uh, we were part of the only lds church in the city that we lived in um oh, wow. yeah there was only one lds church at the time and okay. we were part of it both my parents actually served lds missions wow yeah um but okay so sorry i kind of sidetracked you so you were <laughs> how old so um when my parents started investigating it i think i was probably about six or seven okay. um but when they actually converted um i was about nine ten but i didn't really 
because uh, I remember being baptized and I didn't realize because uh, I got baptized into the LDS church and then I was told, oh, hey, you need to get baptized again. Like your foot went up or something and that's not supposed to happen. So we got to baptize you again. Um, yeah, no, they baptized me into the AB oh, and wow. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. And so I got baptized in a freezing cold river in January because my, oh, my birthday gosh. is in January. And yeah, that was a lot of fun. I guess I'm lucky my birthday was in August. <laughs> yeah, no so kidding. I was warm and dunked in the water. Oh, yeah, no. I, mine was like January in did the freezing cold. Did you do the whole blessings to like the laying in the mm-hmm. head? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Con- did you guys do consecrated oil? No. That's, no? Okay, what's that's so, so weird? Because yeah. you do like the blessing, but yeah. without the oil? All I remember that's is we had all these numbered men, and I remember feeling like their hands are so heavy because they're all pushing on my head. Oh. And they record your blessing. It's like your blessing, and you they like to oh. refer it back to the blessing. Okay, so that's really similar to like the AUB and the LDS. They do like what's called a patriarchal blessing, mm-hmm. um, and you receive it like once you've kind of like gotten to a certain point where they feel like you're ready and mm-hmm. like your your you're spiritual worthy. journey is mm-hmm. like going where it needs to be and I find it really funny because everyone's like oh it's such an honor I received my patriarchal blessing but they're all really generic the yep. same message yep. like if you're a woman like oh you're going to be blessed with sign. many <laughs> children and you're going to have a long and happy marriage mm-hmm. and you're going to do the Lord's work and you're going to provide community for these other women and you're going to find like sisterhood with your sister wives and they all were like that it's so funny because people would be like oh yeah I got my patriarchal blessing like we're not supposed to talk about it but then when they like talk about it years later they realize they all had the same blessing yeah, yeah. Well, we talked about ours and like because it was like our eight-year-old like we didn't really understand what was going on and then when we would listen to the recordings when we're older it was always like a mother in zion for all the women you mm-hmm. know obviously so i used to believe hardcore though in like the direction the dream process did you guys have direction dream process like if you <laughs> dream about someone and marry them in your dream that's your direction from god that you're supposed to marry them uh, not quite like that but we did have like promptings okay oh, yeah and uh, it's actually really sad because i used to be really good friends with this girl and then you be and she was super in love with this guy he was super in love with her and they like were wanting to get married and then her sister got a prompting that she was actually supposed to marry him oh and God. poof they got married forgot all about her and no. uh, like she ended up being single for like another few years and it ended up marrying somebody that she didn't really want to be with while having to watch her sister be married to the guy that like yeah. she absolutely mm-hmm. loved and That's like so i mean prompting is like um a lot of the time they were just like oh like i have a feeling that i'm supposed to be marrying this person or i have a feeling that i'm supposed to go check in on so and so and then if so and so happened to be having a bad day it was like oh my prompting was right the holy ghost guided me <laughs> and <laughs> I'm like, and it just validates their feelings and it makes them believe that they're being prompted and unfortunately like it led to a lot of deep rooted issues in people mm-hmm. because like if you weren't receiving promptings you obviously didn't have the spirit yeah. you don't have the same prompting as me like you're wrong mm-hmm. like your I testimony isn't hierarchy. strong enough yeah. yeah so i'm sure like if you had a prompting but if like one of the quorum of 70 or whatever had a prompting theirs is going to trump yours oh yeah 100 so percent. that's something that annoyed me really bad too is like even though i had supposed direction on the boys i wanted to marry it didn't <laughs> matter because the ones above me were like no we're tied yeah. hiring with God oh, yeah. and you i i didn't like the whole like strength of testimony and like follow your promptings and follow the spirit and all that because that was something that never happened for me i never got mm-hmm. anything like you that you feel so bad about yeah yourself. you feel like guilty like what's wrong with me like I just don't have enough faith and, and I, like I would pray and pray and pray mm-hmm. and and like just read the Book of Mormon in the Bible like cover to cover over and over again and nothing yeah. <laughs> and everyone thought there was something sincerely wrong with me and I ended up faking a testimony oh. and like <laughs> writing up a fake one just because I would get harassed like you need to bear your testimony you need to bear your testimony and then I'd be made to feel so guilty about yeah. it that I came up with a fake one just to get them to shut up. Right. Email. Well, it's a society too. And if you don't fit in, you're kind of the odd one out of society. Mm-hmm. I guess my question is now, did you ever feel like it was the true church? 
No. So uh, when my parents converted, I didn't really know what was happening. So we moved over from England because we were told we had to be in Zion in order to be a part of this true so church. Can't... But I didn't understand that. I didn't even know we were moving over here. They didn't tell us. Oh my God. So it, we were told we were going on vacation. Forever. <laughs> and no, we just we were told like we're going on vacation. We had like one bag. Like I remember my parents let me bring one book and like two toys and that oh, was it. God. And I only had like a few outfits <laughs> and um, we got here and my dad ripped up the return tickets and he's like, so we're living here now. And I just remember this sick feeling like, what? You never get to see your I, friends I, again? Like, you never I have them. like, my two best friends lived across the street from me. Mm -hmm. My parents almost adopted, uh, one of them because their parents, one of their parents was dead and the other was like very absent. Mm -hmm. And they were like about to go through the like process for adopting them. I'm like, what are they going to do now? They have nobody. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't get to say bye to anyone. What about my family? Like, do they know? Like, That's and I was so, so yeah. So I, I just like didn't talk, didn't open up. Like, I just buried myself in books for weeks. Um, sure. And uh, that's when you're so young, you don't know how to process it. Yeah, it's so new. And and because of that, like because of just the shock of oh, we were living here, then I didn't realize what was going on around me. And one day. My dad's like, we're going to go to church. And I was like, okay, some normalcy, like, mm -hmm. we'll go to church. And we get there, and I start noticing there's, like, several women for each man. I'm like, what? The two and two together. <laughs> and then somebody turned around, because, like, my sister was really little at the time. And she, like, tapped on this lady's shoulder. She's like, I like your hair, because her hair was, like, this beautiful strawberry blonde color. And she's like, oh, thank you. They start playing. And the lady introduces herself to my dad, and she's like, oh, you must be, like, new, I'm so-and-so, this is my husband, and he turns around, and he's like, and this is my other wife, so-and-so, and it clicked, and I was like, oh, my God. That was the first what? time you met <laughs> Yeah, and I was so, like, it was like I was confused, but I understood what was going on, I was like, because I kind of heard rumors before, like, mm -hmm. adults mentioning stuff about, like, multiple wives and whatnot and it clicked and i just fell sick so you kind of <laughs> knew it wasn't normal from the get-go yeah because i i had grown up and it was normal for my friends to have like two moms instead of a mom and dad or yeah. two dads instead of a mom and a dad, a dad or seven moms <laughs> yeah or it was like normal to have one parent be white and the other be black like that so was you normal. had an experience in the real, like a taste of the real world, and then you were kind of brought into this cult. That's yeah. so weird. And it, where everything that I knew was wrong. Like yeah. it was not okay to be gay. It was not okay to be a multicultural family. Mm -hmm. It was not someone who's not white. Yeah, it was not okay to even be dark skinned. And that for me, my best friend was from Nigeria, so I was. That's not so, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was so uncomfortable with uh, just the blatant racism from the get go. Because it's such a different perspective. Because for me, like I was born in it, so yeah. it all seemed normal at, until it hit, you hit a point, yeah. right? But for you, it's like so. I'm supposed to erase everything <laughs> that I knew and start over. Yeah. No, it's it's really like funny to look back on it now too, because it's like I, I've been asked a lot, like, did you ever believe in it? And it's I can't think of a time that I honestly did. I remember trying to, yeah. um, just to fit in, right. to feel like I belong somewhere, but right. I don't think I ever felt like I was supposed to live it. I don't think I ever felt like it was right. So it was kind of like you had to live a fake life for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Sad. It's so similar to the order, yet it's so different. Like, did you guys take sacrament? Yes. Okay, yes, we did. so we never took sacrament. We okay. never did um, the garments, except for like when someone would die, like a numbered man would die, then they would dress them in garments when they were buried, okay. but they never wore, you guys have garments like this. Yes. You guys are like very similar to the LDS, but it's almost like you're just a few generations. Yeah, so it's like, um, it's like if the LDS church went backwards, but became almost more extreme. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little like LDS on crack or something. Yeah, <laughs> really. Steroids. Like yeah. uh, their standards are a lot higher too. Like yeah. in the LDS church, their their standards for things are a little more lax in mm -hmm. a lot of areas. And in the AUB, it's just like, no, this is the way. Right. So that's what I was gonna ask. Um. So in the order, we had the memory gems. I think I had a video of me and Colleen like doing our memory gems, and we have ABC order standards. Like, 
with there's a standard for every ABC. So like um, K is for kiss. I will say my first kiss for my wedding day, and like L is for loyalty. Like they have all you have to memorize them for homework, even in the end. Like really? School. Yeah. Oh so I'm wondering, God. did you guys have anything like that? So we had a lot of like similar like hymns and um, stuff like that for um, like the, as the LDS church, mm-hmm. and we had. Um, <laughs> uh, so I was asking if um, you guys have something kind of like our memory gyms where so we did meditation every day seven in the morning <laughs> and noon so even in school they would ring the bell and all the kids would sit down fold their arms and have their five minute meditations sometimes they would tell us what to meditate about like okay. if someone was in prison at the time I remember David was in prison at the time for raping his niece they didn't tell us that they told us just because we were being bad that's why he was in prison but so we would all have to meditate for that, for him to get out of jail, right? Please help oh David get out of jail. God. And um, then after the meditation, you would do your memory gems, which was like this long mantra about how, like, learn to like to do the things you ought to do. That was the biggest thing, like, the thing that I'm... That's so culty. I don't know. Uh, like, I how, play, uh, how is that not a giant red flag? Like, learn to like to do the things you ought to do, like... But I think they kind of go off of, like... Um, in the Bible, like, the worldly man is going to want to do the worldly things, and we need to learn to like to do the things we ought to do, or whatever, but... So it's we have, so crazy. It's so crazy. It's Imagine so... a room of, like, 30 people, because we would have family home evenings, too, yeah. like, every month. So 30 people having their meditation, and then everyone putting their heads up and going, it is my firm resolve and fixed purpose to give my all to the Lord, my time and talents, all that I am ever expected to be, the establishment of design. Like, it's so culty, but I there it's like... be put in a padded cell. I know, like, right? You can go is, crazy. Oh my God. So you guys didn't do anything like that? No. So, I mean, like, we had to memorize, like, little things here and there um, as, like, a primary requirement. So did you guys have primary, like... Cause Sunday school? So kind of like Sunday school. So there was... Um, there was Sunday school and then there was primary, which I think we had on like Thursday nights and there was like, it was separated into like different age groups and you'd be studying different things. So primary was more like, um, like trying to find ways to make learning about the scriptures and, and the group fun, like, oh. like trying to make it interesting for the kids where Sunday school was more like the study part of it. And there was young women's and relief society um, These are all priesthood. LDS terms. That's yes. so weird. Yeah, so Relief Society is for, like, the married women. Um, young women's is for, like, the women that are past puberty. <laughs> so is it like, kind of so like marriage prep? Kind of, so yeah. Like marriage prep. What did you learn in that class, do you know? Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> but I think I, like, was outside smoking most of the time. You were? How yeah. did you get away with that? Oh, God. I, I I knew that property probably better than, like, the groundskeeper did. Wow. I, like, there was a little river behind it. And there was, like, this one fence where, like, this tree grew. And the way that it grew, you could not see anything behind that oh, okay. fence. And so, like, I'd go over there. Spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, and there was, like, uh, since the river was right, that was really loud. So it's, like, even if I was, like, standing there talking to someone, you could not hear me. Wow. And so I was... You rebel. <laughs> yeah. I would have gotten beat the daylights out of me if I got caught smoking. Did you ever get caught smoking? Uh, once. And it was really funny because I, like, got dragged inside by my ear. Um, <laughs> and it was with one of the council members' sons, and no. he's just like, you know, like you're going to hell, blah blah blah. And I was just like, as long as I don't get to see you, I'll have a grand time. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh he was gosh. not happy. Did you want to talk about Trek? Because I was saying, like, yeah, Girl Scouts. Yeah. I think. So Girl Scouts in the order was just like they would take a bunch of the girls who were. I feel like it was like of marrying age, and mm-hmm. we would go on this three day. We would go to the holy spot where, so I was explaining this before, the holy spot is we all face north and we pray because the holy spot is apparently where Jesus came down and gave the keys to the church. Okay, we do something similar, like, except for we face, well, I guess technically we would be facing north because that's where the temple is, and we, really? like, face the temple technically, like, because even though the LDS church isn't correct anymore, according to the AUB, um, the church was still, or the temple was still built when the church held the keys essentially and so a lot of the time like people will have either a picture of god or jesus or joseph smith or whoever 
on a north wall of their home so they know which way to face and then everyone would pray in that direction. Yeah, I remember being on a vacation and being like, Mom, which way is north? God's <laughs> not gonna hear my prayer. And now, like, so I don't really pray. I'm probably being honest, I don't really pray very much. But if I ever catch myself praying, I make sure I'm not facing north. Like, it has to be anywhere <laughs> Anywhere but north. It was so weird, though, to see, like, so we would all stand up and then all turn to face north. Is that how it was in your church? Kind of, yeah. So, like... I mean, it wasn't, it probably wasn't as synchronized. It'd just be like, okay, like, like certain people would know, like, okay, this way is like north automatically. Obviously in big households with a million kids running around, they're like, no, we face this way. Yeah. It's north kind of thing. Like with a million kids, like, mom. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But, uh. Our group, I mean, they would just slap the kids if they didn't. So all the kids were always facing north. Like they knew to face north. So like last time I went to. I actually, there was a funeral, and I was able to go, um, so there was a few outsiders that went, and they all stood up to say the prayer, and they all turned north. I turned south, and I was, like, making eye contact with the people going north. I was like, hey, I'm not That's facing so north. Funny. It still messes with you even after you go. Oh, yeah. Even though it's, like, not going to be a big deal if I face north or not, but in my brain, it's, like, I can't let them have that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's them still controlling me in a weird yeah. way. Oh, my sister, so she does, like, little things to kind of, like, like you, like, facing like the other you? way. Like, she'll do little things to kind of, like, challenge or, like, uh, contradict those beliefs. Like, mm -hmm. she's still, like, really particular about certain things because, of, like, all the things that were instilled in her. So she still has a picture of Jesus in her home, but it's facing the toilet. So, like, oh. <laughs> when you're on the toilet, you look up and there's Jesus. Like, yeah. She's like, well, if he's always watching you, like, why is it any different? Like, right. if he's in here. That's so. true. I remember thinking that as a kid, like, so he always watches Yeah, my, my daughter's afraid of Santa now because she's like, he sees us when we're sleeping, Mom. <laughs> so creepy, I know. Oh, no. Um, I had a, okay, that's where, where I was going with this. So, the whole temple thing, how you guys face the temple. Mm -hmm. But they supposedly lost the keys. There's one prophet in particular where they're like, he lost the keys and then the AUB and the Kingstons and the FLDS were like still part of that collective group and then they were all arguing over the keys and then the AUB ended up with the keys. Right. So they told you guys more of the true story. They never told us that there was any like break off where they were because because think about it if it makes sense that if they broke off from the LDS church that they all kind of huddled together as holiness mm -hmm. right yeah but they never told us that like they just said Warren Jeffs is wrong like all the other groups they're just astray and we're the only true ones blah blah, blah. but um, they told us that we did this little field trip one day and we went down to the LDS temple mm -hmm. down in Temple Square and they told us see how the temple is gray it used to be pure white the brick was like pure white to be God's pure place right but as soon as they stopped living polygamy, the temple turned gray. And I remember being like, what? Really? Oh my god. I'm so, so you never funny. heard that story? I've never okay. heard that story. Since we had like our own temple kind of thing, um, people would be like, yeah, it's pretty to look at now, but it's not the same since they lost the keys. So we have our own special place. You do have a temple? Yeah, yeah. it's... So it's... I'll have to show you a picture like sometime. Like a ghetto temple? <laughs> So, so they try to make it look pretty. It's basically like a trailer home, but you can like ship it and whatnot. Like, okay, yeah. So it's kind of like somebody put multiple ones of those together, like fancied it up a little bit and planted a garden around it. Oh, really? Yeah. What's the purpose of a temple? Um, For like temple ceilings, like being oh. sealed to like your family that died oh. or like marriages or so like... So you guys really do everything by the book. Because yeah. we didn't have, we have temples, we really? didn't have sacrament, we didn't just the same thing, no garments. No, I feel like the order was just like, anything to do with having to just pay extra money, we're not going to do that. Okay. So, like, why would we pay for bread on every Sunday for, you know, sacrament? We, we had people specifically make it, and then it was blessed and whatnot. We didn't do wine, though, we did water. Um, yeah. They used to not have cameras, and then after me, they had cameras. Um... <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> no. Smoking in the back. No. What was your guys' rule? So in the order, it was like case for kiss. Won't have my first kiss until my wedding date. Can't hold hands or hug unless you're engaged. Were you allowed to date? So dating, it, it still kind of depended on family and like what their personal preference was. Some families were a little more lax about it. Other families were like super strict. But I was not allowed to date. That was not a thing. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of got to the point where my parents were like, you're not allowed to date, but we know you're kind of dating, but 
Like, we're going to kind of supervise, but we're not, but we're still going to punish you for certain things. It was, mm-hmm. so it was, contradicting, it was yeah. so weird and so confusing. My first, like, boyfriend, I guess, I was 14, he was 19. Um, um. And his mom and my mom were really good friends. And we kind of started seeing each other. My mom was like, nope, not happening. My mom was like the enforcer. My dad was like busy with like priesthood work. So mm-hmm. my mom was kind of like the enforcer. Um, and my mom kept saying, no, no, no. And she caught us holding hands and sent my dad to go have a talk with him. It's like, it's so hard to <laughs> so, imagine that your mom could be so ingrained when she wasn't even born. And right. Like- it was, so my dad, my dad didn't really know how to be the enforcer in those kind of situations. Like he had so much on his plate. He had yeah. priesthood responsibilities and he was providing for two families. Um, was your dad, did your dad end up? living when you guys joined yes so my dad i think honestly he got set up with someone within the first like six months of us being over here and she was like 20 21 at the time like which i i guess now thinking about it like my parents weren't that old at the time like they were probably like 30 okay so it's not yeah they were like 30 31 but like i mean i'm 27 and if I had, like, gotten married to somebody who was 30 when I was, like, 20, 21, yeah. that's a huge age gap, a huge, like, life experience gap. And it's not only that. This this 21-year-old is marrying a man who's already married and has children. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, like, I was 10 at the time, wow. so I was half her age. How did you guys and, handle that? Did you know he was getting married um, to another woman? So it was, it was weird because, like, she started coming around, and then she was, like our parents' friend that would, like, occasionally bring us out for ice cream, and it was weird. Like, she would, like, take us out and be, like, all, like, cute. And, like, look what I'm doing for your girls, like, to my dad. And then, and then like, she'd be all nice to us and invite us over for sleepovers, but didn't really seem that interested in us. And then all of a sudden, her and my dad are like, we're getting married. Like, wow. Oh. Were you mad or do you remember being mad? So, I don't. I don't remember how I felt, like, when I found out. I kind of, like, because that was still such a weird, blurry time. Because yeah. I was still getting young. used to everything. Yeah, so um, but I do remember her, her wedding. First of all, she made me wear the ugliest dress. Yeah, uh, I wish I did. Oh. I, my mom does somewhere. I'll have to find it. I can't but, even imagine what your mom was going through. Cause she... Yeah, it was so weird because my mom was actually the one that encouraged a lot of it. Um, yeah, my mom was more into the polygamy thing than my dad ever was. And I remember, like, them actually, like, kind of acting out ceremony a little bit, like, doing the vows and stuff, walking down the aisle. Oh, I did not like her. Does he have kids with this movie? So, she had fertility issues, basically their entire marriage. Um, and she ended up getting pregnant right when my dad left. Like, uh-huh. right when my dad left. Why so, did your dad leave? Gosh, did he, he ever, I mean, know this is probably personal, but did he ever, like, apologize? Like, because he yeah. kind of brought you guys there? Yeah.